In the previous Gmail and contact self-assessment, we discussed how you can create new contacts that are personal and available only to you. This is especially helpful for email addresses outside of Blake School. But one of the advantages of Google Groups, I'm going to go ahead now and switch to Google Groups, is that I'm in, now located in my My Group section and I can see I belong to about a half a dozen groups. And the primary difference between Google Groups and uh, your personal contacts is every Google Group has its own email address, its own group email address. So for example, if I was to select PK12Info and select the My Membership button next to PK12Info, what I'll see is a group email address. So in this case, the group email address for PK12Info is PK12Info at blakeschool.org. Why does that matter? Well, I'm switched now back into my email uh, service, and when I start typing in PK12 info, I'll be able to send, if I'm a member of that group, a email, a calendar invite, or a doc to any member of those groups. So it's a great way to send uh, information or share information with a much larger group of people, and this applies across the Google Apps universe, mail, docs and drive, calendar sites. Um, and much easier to use. And what you'll notice is, is as you start to send email in your Google Contacts service, so I've now switched to Google Contacts, you'll see that um, they'll start to appear in your most contacted. So I've been sending a number of invitations to Workshop Week News, which is a Google group, um, or in your other contacts based on um, infrequent contacts. So personal contacts um, will appear under here in my contacts. Those are ones that you've added manually and Google Groups will be a good way for you to take advantage of the group email feature to share uh, information with large bodies or large members of the group.